Hello, welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaboration between the United States Small Business Administration and its resource partners where we showcase Hawaii's entrepreneurs and small businesses. Um, my name is Dennis Kwok. I'm the director of the Veterans Business Outreach Center. And today we actually have a very good guest and a special guest. Her name is Kate Ryman, and she is the um, founder of Rogue Wave Toys. So Kate, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, and Kate's also a, um, you are also a client of ours. Mm -hmm. And uh, we recently met and had a chance to kind of, you know, kind of explore ideas for your company. But before we, before we actually talk about your company, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm a military spouse, and that is actually how I found you all. Um, we were stationed in D.C. at the Pentagon, and that's really where the idea started uh, when we were on a, a family trip in the uh, Chesapeake. And that grew, and then we were stationed here about two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and that um, the idea kept growing, and it made a lot more sense. Um, I think the idea that I had um, almost existed in a silo mm -hmm. on the East Coast, and here in Hawaii, it felt like it really uh, breathed new life, and there was a lot more um, intensity around it. So, um, so I was grateful for the move to sort of jumpstart the business itself. Okay. Uh, so talk about, let's talking about uh, your business. How did this all come to fruition? I mean, you were at the beach, or what happened? Yeah, so when we were stationed um, at the Pentagon and we were living in Virginia, mm -hmm. we took our kids down to the beach, um, as we did very often. I loved being at the beach. And there was a, a day where I was with my children, and I had uh, I have two boys, and they were pretty young at the time. One of them was playing on the shore with a bunch of you know, conventional plastic beach toys, just like every other family has. Yeah. And a wave came in out of the blue and just swept all of his toys out into the ocean, probably about a dozen of them. And I've always been really aware of the plastic pollution problem. I've always been sort of tuned into um, environmental issues and sustainability. And so just this could not happen on my watch. I could not let all of these toys go out into the ocean. So I jumped in and I was pulling out all these toys and um, finally got them all up on shore and sat back and kind of looked up and down for a moment and was like, what are we doing? You know, we have to make this better. We're using materials. We're using um, oil-based materials in these products that are pervasive, and I have to make this better. So it was sort of this uh, light bulb moment for me where I, I realized this is where I can make a change. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a fascinating, I mean, it's not only a fascinating story, but it's got real depth, you know, your product. And, uh, I, I find it really great. Um, so that's kind of the lightning bolt moment. Mm -hmm. And then transferring that lightning bolt moment to a business. I mean, that must have took a lot of uh, effort and a lot of challenges. Yeah, yeah, it did because I, you know, had no background in this, uh, mm -hmm. in the materials economy. I had to really learn a lot about it. Um, I'm a writer by trade, so you know, I was doing my work. And then um, off times, I was on the internet doing a ton of research and trying mm -hmm. to figure out who to talk to about starting a product line and who to talk to about finding the right material. And um, I think the the one good thing, well, I found several good things in this experience, um, but one of the best things I found is that people really want to help. And mm. so um, I was able to just reach out to complete strangers that I found on Instagram or friend of a friend of a friend, you know, via email um, that would give me suggestions or point me in the right direction or make an intro for me that I needed. And um, a lot of those concepts in the beginning fell through, but they really helped pave the way to. Um, get me where I am right now. So mm -hmm. I think that was one of the greatest lessons I learned in the beginning was you're not always going to find exactly what you're looking for immediately, but you have to keep pushing forward. Yeah. And, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, things that didn't work out, you've kind of finalized uh, what your product line is right now? We found uh, the material that I think is best suited for the product. Okay. Yeah, after lots of uh, prototyping and lots of failed prototypes. And sure. Um, starts and stops. Yeah, we found a great material line that I'm really proud of, okay. and uh, I'm really proud to introduce to the world via this product. Okay, maybe we can uh, take a close shot of the actual product. Um, why don't you explain to us what this is, what yeah. we're looking at? So um, this right here is the sifter, and we designed this so that the holes in the sifter were small enough to grab uh, little bits of microplastic, which are so prevalent, unfortunately, especially on the windward side where we live. Wow. Um, so I think, you know, before maybe like 10, 20 years ago when you would go to the beach and you'd bring a sifter, yeah. you could have these like big 
wide spaces um, for the sand to go through, and you're catching like rocks, rocks and yeah, sticks, shells, right? Yeah, yeah, but sure. I think now it's a totally different game where you know you have these really tiny pieces. I think microplastics are defined as like five millimeters or smaller, okay. and we certainly have that on these beaches. So when I was talking to my product designer, I wanted to be sure that um, we included a way to incorporate like actually sifting yeah. um, conventional plastic off the beach. Wow. So that's what that's what you're seeing here. So um, it's got a kind of a dual effect. I mean, it's not really for sifting uh, through, I guess, shells and rocks, but you're actually looking yeah. for... Yeah, hopefully someday these will eliminate the need to sift for microplastics. <laughs> but yeah. yes, for right now, we wanted to incorporate that. That is great that concept. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then our shovel. And um, the shovel, what I like about this is that there's that hole through the middle mm -hmm. so that... You can make a drip castle, um, oh. which when I was talking to uh, friends and family with kids, they thought having an element to create drip castles was really important. So sure. we included that in. And uh, you have uh, young children, am I? Am I? I have a nine yeah. and a seven-year-old. Okay, and yeah. they play. They love the toys. Yeah, there. It's funny. My nine-year-old is like at the point where he's. Like, yeah, yeah these are great, mom. <laughs> but you know, he's yeah. kind of like moving on. Okay. What would you say the suitable age for? I mean, I really think like as. Early as you can play on the beach to probably 10, 12 years old. You know, really? like, wow. yeah. I mean, you when you walk up and down the beaches, you even see like dads getting in on the sure. action and building sand castles. So I think the it's for the young and the young at heart. You for know? sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's um, so you want to talk a little bit about the materials? I mean, what yeah. makes it compostable? Yeah. So um, conventional plastic is made from oil. I don't mm -hmm. know if a lot of people are aware of that, but mm -hmm. when you have an oil based plastic, um, there are a lot of problems with it. Yeah. Um, to get to get to to get plastic to be at a state where you can actually manufacture with it, you need to first extract the oil, mm -hmm. and then you need to refine the oil, and then you turn that into a pellet, which is just like a tiny little piece of plastic, pre-production plastic that's then melted and molded into whatever product you want to make. Um, extraction and refinement are among the top. They're in the top five. Uh, for U.S. greenhouse gas emitters. So super dirty process to sure. create conventional plastic. And then we know now, mm -hmm. as we've observed, yeah. that plastic at the end of its life, uh, it just continues to break down, but it never fully disappears. Wow. So it's super dirty in the beginning of its life, and yeah. it's really dirty at the end of its life, and it actually doesn't really have an end of life, really? right? I was reading on your website that uh, it takes like hundreds of years yeah. for it to actually dissolve. Yeah. And in the meantime, yeah. it's releasing toxic chemicals, it's killing sure. uh, marine life, it's leaching those chemicals into our water. Um, so it's just pretty much a disaster. And I think that the, maybe the intent of the, um, the plastics industry was not to be harmful, maybe in the beginning, um, because maybe you don't know what you don't know. But I think now we've, we're at such a turning point where now that we're aware of what's happening, it's really our... Um, responsibility to do better and sure. that was really the premise of this company it's like we've got to do better we know this is terrible for our environment we know it's terrible for us right. and we need to make a change and so really the big driver for me is to bring this material to market yeah. um, so that people can see hey you know what this stuff exists mm -hmm. and we can use this as a viable replacement for our oil-based economies right. um, particularly our materials economy. So this material um, in particular is plant-based instead of oil-based, mm -hmm. and it is certified compostable, which means it meets the ASTM D6400 standards. Okay, I don't um, know what that means, but I... It just means that it does actually compost, <laughs> okay. and it leaves no toxic residue oh, okay. behind when okay. it does compost. So um, I'm really proud of it. I'm really... It took a long time to find this yeah. and to vet the material, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited that we have the opportunity to bring this to a wider audience. Sure. I mean, this has, I mean, of course it is a toy, but it's got a very big social element, like you were saying, and we're, I mean, it's been talked about how bad plastic is for mm -hmm. the environment, um, and, uh, you know, it's great to see a product that's actually doing more help than harm. Um, so, with that said, would, would you say that the mission, like your mission uh, to create a, you know, better product or better toys, is that the mission of the company? So would you say that kind of mirrors each other? Yeah, I mean, I think the mission is really to make it better. So it better. like reduce our carbon emissions, sure. make better products using better materials, yeah. and help clean up our oceans. That's really the goal of, yeah. of the business. And it's a great place to, I mean, you know, it's ironic that you ended up in Hawaii yeah. because it is a, you know, very... It's poetic. It is poetic <laughs> justice. Yeah. Okay, and um, how do you feel like 
I mean, has the response been good so far with the products? And I know you've been on uh, local television shows and everything, yeah. and uh, you got a lot of exposure that way. But maybe you could talk about, you know, what you want this product to do in terms of how it helps the, econ I mean, the local community. Yeah. Well, the response uh, to your question has been really fantastic. Yeah. I think that what I've noticed um, as an environmentalist and a, a conscious consumer myself, I noticed that I sort of live in a world of um, sort of denial, right? Like I deny myself certain products because I know how harmful they are for the environment. What I didn't realize is when I launched this, um, this product and this campaign, um, how many other people felt the same way. Yeah. I got a lot of feedback from other moms who were so grateful that there was a product that they could purchase that they didn't feel guilty about. And so I think that just speaks to the need for alternatives to conventional plastic. Um, you know, when I came up with this idea, that's really what it was, it was just my idea existing in my brain. And then when we did this marketing campaign around our crowdfunding campaign, um, that feedback was so valuable to me that there are other parents out there that feel the same way and want to see some sort of an alternative to convention. Yeah. And uh, do you feel like, uh, I mean, they're talking about uh, other toys, but do you sometimes think about uh, creating other kinds of toys that are using Absolutely. this material? I, the beauty of this material is that we can apply it to, it's not just beach toys. You right. Know? And really, that's, that's, this business is not just beach toys, but the beach toys are my entry point into the market, yeah. right? We can show people, hey, we can do this with beach toys. Where else can we apply this? And what a great place to start with yeah. beach toys, yeah. right? This is where we, as humanity, we're enjoying the benefits of the ocean. Of it's like on the shores, you're combining those two elements um, where you can play and, and respect what the ocean has given to you. And uh, I, I think the beach toys are just a really nice place to start. It is a great place to start. I want to talk a little bit more about your beach toys and about your company. I want to take a short break. Uh, we'll be back. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, I am Yukari Kunisue, host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii's Japanese program. Broadcasting every Monday from 2 p.m. I usually invite a guest in Japanese language community who does interesting things, and I'd like to share stories with you guys. Please tune in and listen to Konnichiwa Hawaii. Welcome back. My name is Dennis Kwok from VBOC of the Pacific. We have Kate Ryman from uh, Rogue Wave Toys here, talking more about your fascinating product line. Um, during the break, we were talking about, uh, we had one actual, you actually brought a product yes. and we couldn't showcase yes, today. Yes, we can't showcase uh, it. Because it's actually a green and we're working with yeah, a green screen. It disappears. It disappears <laughs> in the background. Uh, but uh, yeah, it also comes, so it comes in a set. Yes, yeah, so uh, the product is a three-piece set. It's uh -huh. the, uh, the, the beach pail Which with is, the sifter. Yes, yeah. it would be here. <laughs> and the sifter and the shovel. And it's a nesting design, so easier for parents for because sure. um, you can stick the shovel inside the pail, put the sifter right on top, and carry it. Um, and there's little handles underneath for the kiddos, too, when they're holding, like, yeah. big, heavy, you know, buckets full of sand and water. So yeah. I really tried to, um, as proud as I am of the material itself that we're using, I really tried to address some of the pain points for parents, sure. which is durability and carrying all of the stuff. Right? Yeah, so. so there's function and I mean functionality behind uh, That's right. how you did it. Yeah. And do you sell anything else? I mean, besides for the toys? Right uh, no, the toys are our first uh, application, mm -hmm. um, but we are going to be launching the sale of the material itself. Oh. Um, so that anyone who wants to make a better product using better material has the opportunity to do so, oh. specifically for injection molding. See, that's wonderful, just because you know it's kind of like open sourcing and giving people kind of the you know palette to 
they or to kind of open canvas to do their right own exactly products. yeah yeah because really the goal of of this business for me is to um, as overused as the term might be is to disrupt the petrochemical industry sure. right I mean we need to show that there are other innovative ways that we can solve these problems yeah um, I think that. As I said before, we can continue to deny ourselves these products, but the reality is um, I think the majority of the population is not always of that mindset. And yeah. so if we can start to replace conventional plastic with compostable plastic, then maybe we can, as consumers, you know, take a look at the options out there and say, okay, do I really need this? Yeah. Um, I think one of the interesting parts about a product like this is you're going to see a difference in price if you go to a store and you see a conventional plastic beach toy alongside a rogue wave beach toy. Sure. Um, there will be a difference in price because sure. the material that I use is much, much more expensive than an oil-based plastic. And so what my hope is, is that the consumer says, why is that so expensive? And they're going to look and they're going to see. And then that right there is an educational moment. Now my consumer is aware, sure. whether they purchase the toy or not, right that their decisions have an impact and what they decide to spend their money on has a greater impact. So it's not just about selling a beach toy, it's about educating the public that there are alternatives and we need to be really actively seeking those out. For sure. Yeah, and uh, when you introduce a new product, especially um, with new materials, it's always gotta be more expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, when solar first came on or when you were talking about you know, yeah. uh, electric vehicles first came onto the right. scene, it was just you know very, very expensive. And uh, right. you're going to have those kind of uh, pain points as a business. Right. And I'm assuming you had a lot of pain points trying to get this product off the yes, line. Yes, we've already had many. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, could you kind of highlight something? I know that, you know, in going into full production, you're going to have pain points. Yeah. And uh, what are some of the things that maybe you can share with the viewers? What are, you know, uh, some of the uh, challenges you've had uh, manufacturing? Yeah. I think right now, the well, some of the biggest challenges I've had we're just prototyping. Um, that was really difficult. Sourcing the right material was really difficult. I um, tried out a, a couple of different materials that were just not, um, they're great materials and they have great applications, but not for the beach, these beach toys. Um, so just finding the right material took, you know, almost two years. And yeah. then once I found it, it was trying to prototype. Um, I knew that I wanted to 3D print the prototypes, but trying to figure that out, um, you know, that comes with its own set of issues. and. The printers that I had found at some of the um, workspaces were too small for the design, and then um, trying to outsource the printing was cost prohibitive. So I eventually just decided to purchase my own 3D printer and 3D print the products myself. Yeah. Um, and that took a long time. I had to sure. teach myself how to how to do that, and yeah. you know, so now you're learning a whole new skill set. Um, so that was a that was a huge learning curve, um, and then. I would say just trying to convince certain people that this is a valid idea. I spoke to a couple of sales reps who um, just, they were like, we would never, we would never rep your product because we don't stand to make any money from it and no one's gonna buy this. Um, so those are difficult things to hear, but again, um, going back to the, the marketing initiative that we had around the crowdfunding campaign, um, the comments that I received from, parents who are really excited about the product gave me hope that yes there will be people who will buy this and it's just that because it's innovative and new it's mm -hmm. going to take a little more time sure. to introduce this kind of a product to the world and it's great that you have already you know first adapters or people that are excited about mm -hmm. your product and i know we were talking earlier that uh, you're actually taking pre-orders for this product. yes right? yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah we'll yeah. be taking pre-orders very, awesome. very soon very yeah. soon yeah it would be awesome yeah. yeah, I'm gonna be the one of the first people to actually buy your <laughs> You toys. better. I will be. Um, so we talked about kind of the challenges you face, and what about the successes? I mean, that's something you know, something you take pride in, and yeah. I think the product and I think the goals and the mission of the company are, you know, it, you should be proud of that enough. But Thank are there you. anything that kind of stands out like during your journey into entrepreneurship that you're like, wow, it's worth it. I've done it. I've done a good yes. job. Yeah. Yes, I had, um, he's now a friend of mine, but I, a former uh, professional baseball player mm -hmm. who reached out to me via Instagram, just like a cold uh, DM mm -hmm. and said, hey, where can I get your product? And mm -hmm. this was like before I had launched the crowdfunding campaign. Um, this was just like out of the blue. He, he reached out to me. And that was like one of the highest 
moments I've had in this business where someone who was not a friend or a family, <laughs> right. you know, someone who didn't know me previously right. uh, wanted my product and was interested in the product. So um, I think that was a really high, um, high mark. And that's for a me. good advertising. Great advertising. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a nice segue into advertising. It's kind of a, the marketing. I mean, it's difficult to, you know, get a product out there, get it yeah. noticed. And um, you have quite a social media following. We're getting there, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's been just a few months, and we've yeah. grown um, substantially. And I would attribute that to sort of the organic movement of people, um, you know, searching these things out, and then also uh, a little bit of the paid um, Facebook and Instagram, for which sure. really helps boost yeah. the visibility for that. Okay. Um, where do you see, I mean, if we had to say, you know, um, three, five years down the line, how do you, I mean, how do you see your company grow? Uh, is it by product line? Is it by exploring new kinds of uh, you know avenues, new markets? I mean, what would you like Rogue Waves to be? Do you have kind of a, a vision? Yeah. Of, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I sort of see it two ways. I see the beach toy line as sort of proof of concept, right? Yeah. That people are ready, consumers want an alternative, and that mm -hmm. they're going to support it using their dollars. Right. And then I also see the materials line growing. Um, when I started this, I had no. Um, mindset. I, I wasn't particularly set on one specific kind of material. I just wanted to introduce new materials to market. So I want to grow uh, the options, right? The so different kinds of materials. Different kinds of materials that Wonderful. we can use. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is a great start and mm -hmm. I will continue to promote that and mm -hmm. try and get this material into as many different injection molded products as possible, um, but open to bringing on new innovative materials as well. Um, I think that the more options we have, the greater success we'll have in moving away from a petrochemical-based mm -hmm. materials economy, um, which I think is greatly needed. And I think Hawaii is a really interesting place because we're trying to do that with our um, single-use plastics, sure. which is really, really important. Um, but we have a lot of other plastic-based products that are not single-use but mm -hmm. do have um, an end of life, yeah. right? So we use a certain product for a certain amount of time, and then we toss it. Uh, maybe we didn't use it once, mm -hmm. but, you know, what happens to it then? Yeah. So I think there's a great opportunity for us to change the mindset and then change the materials. Uh, this is kind of off topic, but Rogue Wave Toys, how did you come up with that name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just that day at the beach with my kids, oh, with your kids you know, yeah. that wave that came in right. really out of nowhere. Uh, and I was describing this story to someone. And I said, yeah, it was a rogue wave that came in out of nowhere. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, oh yeah. that would be a great name. For sure. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I always ask kind of veterans or kind of military spouses this question, uh, you know, with your transition and, uh, you know, because veterans or I mean, uh, military members, they move up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how will your business kind of be able to transfer to another state if you were or another country if you were able, to, I mean, if you are moving? Um, I think that the nice part about this business is it's, a problem that everyone faces, plastic sure. pollution, yeah. um, our addiction to plastic, it's not localized. Yeah. Um, this is something that you can find all over the world. So regardless of where we end up, and I really think it's going to be Hawaii, but regardless of where we go, yeah. I think that the application for this is, is truly without borders. Yeah. You know, this, this can be applied anywhere, and I think it's going to hit home with anyone in any country. Right. Like, um, I don't know if I was talking to you about this, but we, uh, I recently had a discussion about they even had a study done in Germany where they're finding microplastics in beer. Right. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's not, crazy. this is not just affecting Hawaii. It's yeah. not just affecting coastal states in the U.S. I mean, this is truly a global problem. Yeah. Um, you know, when I see innovation like this sometimes, um, sometimes I think there are companies that do it really well and companies not so well, but uh, a lot of times they're ahead of their time. And that causes a lot of challenges mm -hmm. just because you know, costing is hard. Uh, do you sometimes feel like, uh, you know, I'm going to make this jump or I'm going to put these product out there even if, you know, I can't get it at the price point? Yeah, yeah. I, I do feel like that. And I often have this conversation with my husband where I say, um, I'm going to do this. And if I go down in flames, at least I'm the first person like leading this charge, right? right? Because I, I think it's coming. It has to. We yeah. really don't have an alternative. Like right. we either make the change or we suffer greatly a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, and you can already see the effect of um, our consumer choices. So 
So yeah, I mean, it's been difficult. You know, those conversations with sales reps who are like, hey, sure. this is never going to fly. Right. You know, I have to, um, I think what I've learned in this journey in entrepreneurship is be very careful of whose opinion I let in mm -hmm. and whose opinion I sort of check at the door. Right. Um, and that's taken a while, and I still don't always have that quite figured out. But um, I think those kinds of opinions are valid, but also I have to let them go yeah. because the mission for this is greater than uh, what my sales rep stands to make, right, yeah, on the course. sale of our product. Yeah. So, um, you know, as you've told me and, and other advisors have told me, there's other ways around that, right? Um, so it's just about, I think this is something that every entrepreneur goes through. It's just about, how to solve the next problem, right? Because there's all, always going to be problems, um, always issues. And it's just like, how quickly can you get up and solve it and keep moving? Um, some days that's easier said uh, than done. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I do definitely feel like I'm sort of at the leading edge of this. And even though it's really difficult, that's where I want to be. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a fascinating product. And it, I think it's a, a tremendous value outside even the product. And the educational element that you're, you know, uh, putting out there, I think it does make everyone think. And I know when I first actually saw um, saw your website, and I was like, wow, this is actually fascinating. And uh, I hope that you know uh, the successes follow you. And, uh, thank you. I really do appreciate your time and you being here today. Of course, and, uh, thank you for having me. For those of you that are thinking about, uh, you know, uh, making a kind of conscious effort, and uh, you know, for the environment. And if you have cakey, it's really important. I think you guys should definitely check out Rogue Wave Toys. You can go to their website at roguewavetoys.com. And, uh, you know, Kate's around. She lives in Kailua. So right. if you see her around town, say hello, introduce yourself, and she'll definitely give you kind of uh, good information on her toys. <laughs> and everything. I wish more. Thank you, Thank for you very on. much. All right. Thank you for joining us today at uh, Adventures in Small Business. Um, it's always a pleasure. And we will see you next week. Aloha.